The Lord be with you. And also with you. Uh, the best Lutheran way to get people to uh, pay attention. Welcome uh, to Palm Sunday, Palm Passion Sunday. We start out here as we, uh, we recreate Jesus walking into Jerusalem with our palms. If you haven't picked up a palm yet and a bulletin, please do so. Or as we process in, you can do that as well. At, uh, when we start to process in, there's two things you can do. You can go all the way to the altar and put your palm at the foot of the altar, or you can keep your palm with you and just go to your seat. That works well, too. Uh, that's completely up to you how you want to do that. The service uh, is, again, called Palm Passion Sunday. We start with the triumphal entry and then we, and then we throughout the service, start talking about the story of Jesus and the passion of his last days on earth. And uh, therefore, we'll have lots of readings, we'll have communion together, uh, and, and then we'll move on. So today, we'll begin our acclamation uh, with speaking this three times together, which is in your bulletin. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. A reading from Matthew chapter 21. When they had come near Jerusalem and reached Bethage, the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you'll find a donkey tied with a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. Now this took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, a foal of the donkey. Disciples went and did what Jesus had directed them. They had brought the donkey to the colt, they put their cloaks on them, and they sat on them, and the very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and other cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds went ahead of him. And they followed him, shouting, Hosanna, son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, we praise you for the redeeming of the world through your Savior, Jesus Christ. Today, he entered the holy city in triumph. It was proclaimed Messiah, King, by those who spread garments and branches along the way. Bless these branches and those who carry them. Grant us grace to follow the Lord in the way of the cross, so that joined in his death and resurrection, we enter into life with you through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us go forth in peace in Christ's name. Amen. We'll process together. I will lead the procession in. Again, you can lay your palms or you can uh, keep them with you. Let's process in.
never know what you're gonna get.
I just want to say that uh, we as human beings, especially disciples of Jesus Christ, you know, we love these holy days, these high festivals. Uh, we want them to be perfect and wonderful and a celebratory. Um, and that's just not life. Life is messy. Life is hard. Life is painful. Uh, we treat everyone that comes here with love and mercy and respect. But our number one priority always is that everyone is safe and feels safe to worship together. So thank you so much for every one of you uh, as we went through that this morning. Um, life happens like this sometimes, and uh, we respond how God wants us to respond with grace, mercy, and forgiveness in our prayers and thoughts go out to him and all the things that he is dealing with in his life. So we continue ourselves with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who brings us out of captivity into freedom, out of the wilderness into the promised land, out of death into life. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. For the times we are silent when you called us to speak, holy God. For the times we have spoken when you called us to be silent, holy God. For the times we were still when you called us to act, holy God. For the times we acted when you called us to stillness, holy God. For the wrong we have done in anger or in fear, holy God. For the good we have failed to do in love and in peace, holy God. Beloved of God, hear for yourselves. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. In the waters of baptism, grace abounds for us and for all. God turns us in love and puts away every sin, wrong turn, for the sake of Jesus our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. For those who are not familiar with this week, this is our holiest of weeks. It begins with the service of Palm Passion Sunday. We just celebrated, like I said, the entry of Jesus in Jerusalem. But throughout the service, uh, this is not just this service on this Palm and Passion Sunday. This Holy Week is a whole week-long service that ends on Easter morning. So when we depart from today, we don't depart with a blessing or ascending because we're coming back on Monday, Thursday to worship again, and then we're coming back on Good Friday to worship again, and then we're coming back on that Easter Sunday to celebrate the empty tomb. Today we will hear the readings and scriptures of our Lord and Savior and what he went through this last week of his life here on earth before he died and rose again for us and our sins. So we begin that journey together now as we share the peace of God with each other. The peace of the Lord be with you. Please rise as you are able and greet those around you in Christ's name.
We continue with readings from the Holy Scriptures. The first reading is from Mark chapter 14. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, My soul is deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little further, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you sleeping? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy. And they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. Look, my betrayer is at hand. Here ends the reading. Please stand as you're able. As we just read in our gospel story, that in the night in which our Lord was betrayed, he had a final meal with his closest friends. And at that meal, he took bread, he gave thanks, he broke it. He gave it to them to eat, saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it all to drink, saying, this cup is a new promise, a new covenant poured out by my blood for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. These are God's gifts for us. God gave us this holy meal and told us to do this every time that we gather together in remembrance of him. As Lutheran Christians, we believe Christ is present in, with, and under the bread and the wine. Every one of you are welcome to come and partake of this holy meal. We'll have two stations down this middle aisle Uh, Come forward, receive the host, which is the wafer, and then the second station is individual cups of wine, which is dark liquid or juice, which is the clear liquid in the middle, and then go to the very far stations where you can put your empty cups in the bowls. We also have gluten-free. If you need those, please ask for those. But know this, all who are hungry and thirsty, come eat and drink. The table is set, and you are welcome. You may be seated. And community sisters, please come forward.
you need individual prayer, there is someone to pray with you over at the back.
The Gospel of Mark continues. They took Jesus to the high priest and all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again, the high priest asked him, are you the Messiah, the son of the blessed one? Jesus said, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and he said, why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying to him, prophesy. The guards also took him and beat him.
third reading is from Mark chapter 15, verses 1 through 24. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and the scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered them, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call king of the Jews? They shouted back, crucify him. Pilate asked them, why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace that is the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole cohort. And they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him, Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. Returning to the Lord with all our heart, let us pray for the whole people of God, the earth and all who cry out for healing. We respond to hear us, O God, by saying, your mercy is great. Form in the church the mind of Christ, that we may empty ourselves for the sake of the world you love. Open the ears of civil authorities that they may hear the voices of those facing insult and denigration and those who cry out for bread and shelter. Stop our abuse and pollution of your creation and bring to end to famine, disease, terror, and bloodshed. Hear us, O God. 
Be with those suffering from disasters, both natural and human-made, and the people suffering from war and violence. Draw near to all who feel abandoned or who face alienation, death, or illness this holy week. Especially, we lift up to you those we pray for by name, either out loud or silently. Hear us, O God. Bless the Jewish people as they celebrate Passover and grant that the religious religions of the world may grow in mutual understanding and respect. Teach us to walk the way of the cross, that we may be a community of forgiveness and mercy. Hear us, O oh God. Hear us according to your steadfast love, O God, and your great compassion. Bring us to resurrection and rebirth and Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Continuing with Mark chapter 15, verse 25. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Ah, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priest and the scribes were also mocking him among themselves and saying, he saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him.
When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he's calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let's, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last breath. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this was God's Son. In your hand, 
Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. Into your Please stand as you're able. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and the younger, and a jo- Joseph, a Solomon. These used to follow him and provide for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening came, and since it was the day of preparation, that is the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. When Pilate wondered if he were already dead and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted that the body be to Joseph. Then Joseph bought a linen cloth and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth and laid it in a tomb that had been been hewn out of rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where the body was laid. Let us together in prayer. The Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us depart in peace until we meet again.